What's up guys, today we're back at Tex Choice here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee with Matt Sledge. Had a ton of comments since the first couple of videos about becoming an independent tool dealer. So today we're gonna try to answer all those questions in one video. For you branded trucks, this may hurt some feelings and I apologize in advance, but this is all stuff that you need to hear that you guys have asked for. So let's do it. What's up guys, my name is Matt Sledge. I'm an independent tool distributor in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I got my boy Drew right here and I got my boy Connor right here. So listen, I wanna do another video just to reach out to you guys, just to tell you guys if you're on the fence and you're thinking that you can't be an independent tool distributor, I left Cornwell Tools in 2008 and I haven't looked back since. If you're a tool dealer right now, and we all know it's a lot of work, you're gonna to have to put in more work, but all this work that you're doing for yourself is all for you, not for someone else. You don't have franchise fees. You don't have people making money off of you. You don't have your district manager sending you product that you didn't even ask for. So coming to you today to kind of tell you a little bit about what the experience is of being an independent distributor. And I'm, I'm very, very happy about it. I wouldn't change it any other way. And you can come up with your own brand, okay? So I know we're all out here, we're all fighting, we're all having a little trouble because maybe you put gear wrench on the side of your truck and maybe you're not getting the support. Well, then change your name. Just don't change it to Text Choice and I'll be <laughs> fine with it. So change your name. Don't call it BJ Tools or something like that. Call it something else. Call it some other professional name besides yeah. Text Choice. Uh, kind of want to bring Drew in on this. He's a four year old uh, tool guy. Uh, he competes with the Snap On and Matco guy, the Cornwall guy, every single day. And people say, what the heck is Tech's Choice? But as soon as they step onto a truck that's full of inventory and good customer service and a well-dressed person that puts on a great appearance and treats the customer with total respect, it's a no-brainer. So Drew, how have, you, how have you liked being a tool guy for I Tech's Choice? I love it, man. I was a tech for 15 years before I came to work for Matt and I probably won't do anything else in, for the rest of my life, I hope. So. Drew, Drew's actually trying to take my job. So. And then, and then I brought Connor in here, and Connor, being young, came in as an assistant. Connor came in to be a uh, assistant to the tool truck just to help me out with a few things. And then Connor had a fantastic idea. He said, hey, I'm going to come up with uh, TikTok and social media and all that type stuff. So now he's hitting me up for a raise, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, now he's hitting <laughs> me up for a raise. So, guys, if you guys are out there and you're on the fence, the experience of being an independent tool dealer is not that big of a problem when you're – a Maco dealer, you think that those graphics and stuff like that's going to get you something? It didn't get it didn't get me anything. As a matter of fact, in my route, we had a Mac guy that came into the tool business, mm -hmm. and the Mac guy lasted what, Connor? How long? Uh, six months, I think. Six months. He lasted six months. So I don't have anything to pick on you, Mac guys, and tell you guys that your product's crap. Although I don't believe in it, I think it's just as expensive as Snap-on. But our Snap-on guy that we compete against, what do we call him? Uh, Johnny Snap-on or Johnny Dickhead. Yeah, I didn't know. We call him Johnny that. Dickhead. So <laughs> Johnny is a Snap-on guy that we actually compete against. And when we first showed up, he said, "Oh, you're the Amazon truck, and you carry all that cheap stuff and all that type of stuff." Well, he said he was there forever and he was gonna uh, rule the industry and all that type of stuff. Well, I just pounded it with customer service, product, inventory, uh, shove it down their throats. Great customer service. That's what I try to do. I try to mirror my image to both of these guys and tell them, tell them to just go. I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but I just go with the tactics that I know and what works best and to try to mirror my image to these guys. And it always turns out to be a successful, successful route. Drew here is a superstar and I don't know how I can replace him <laughs> and hopefully he'll buy into the company one day. But Drew, what'd you do two weeks ago? Well, this week Slow I down. did. I'm about to get to that. Okay. Well, well. Uh, 13,000? 13, 13,000, guys. So, and and you did you sell a toolbox? No, no, no toolboxes. No toolboxes. We I don't, haven't had a toolbox in months. We don't sell toolboxes on our route. So you guys, your Snap-on guys, you'll listen to them, or your Matco guys, they'll say something like, I sold $25,000 this week. Well, they sold an $18,000 toolbox. So it didn't really, really do those kind of numbers. And Drew, what'd you sell this week? 15,600. 15,600. So. 
And so, I mean, we average, you know, 12 to 15 a week. 12 and that's me, and I've only been doing it for four years, so. Yeah. And all he's running around with is a text choice name. We call it tools the text choose. You want to make the right choice, that's the text choice. So come up with a few marketing things. Live, eat, shit, sleep, and breathe your brand. And that's what I do every single day. And Connor, what did we do this week? Uh, I don't remember what we did. We did 13,000. That is what we did. We that did 13,000. And you guys will say, well, what'd you, what, what did you collect? I collected 10-8, I believe. Mm -hmm. What did you collect? 10-8. Uh, 10, eight. 10, 10, eight. 10 eight, two, nine. Yeah. So guys, if you're out there on the fence and you're thinking that you don't know if you'll have any business, if you go independent, if you're a Cornwell guy, or you're a Matco guy especially, and you're paying too high prices from direct from them, because believe me, Matco doesn't make anything. Cornwell doesn't make much other than their hard line. All the rest of the stuff that you sell on the daily, like the pneumatic uh, fan clutch removal tool made by Lyle, uh, Gear Wrench makes a lot of stuff, Thexton makes a lot of stuff, Sun X Tools, uh, Milwaukee is jumping on board, as you can see behind me, and Milwaukee is supporting you guys more than you know. All you Maco guys that are out there, you wish you were selling Milwaukee like us independent guys. So that's where we're making the money, that's where we're getting the support, and that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So any of you guys that are out there on the fence and you're thinking about going independent, I would tell you to call me, but I really don't know if I have enough time to talk to you. Talk to you. Just research it. Get involved. Look around. Think of a different option, more than, more than the Gear Wrench logo. Gear Wrench is going through some struggles right now. They're trying to get into box stores, and I've had some heavy conversations with Gear Wrench. Told them this is not the direction that I want the company to go in. Has it slowed down some? Yes. Is Milwaukee picking up and taking up the slack? 100%. So when you think you're falling out of options and you're not going to have options, the options are endless in, in the tool industry. You think if you're an independent tool guy and you're not going to sell a lot, 15000 13000 and that's every single week, guys. Every single week we sell that, those, kind of, uh, those, those kind of numbers. But we're not lazy. We pound the ground. We go as hard as we can. We run five days a week. We run three trucks. It's a lot It's a lot of work. But if you're getting your wallet padded by it, who cares about a ring, a plaque, an award? None of those things make me, make me any money. I'm worried about taking care of my family, and I'm worried about taking care of my toys and my kids and all that kind of stuff. So if you're on the fence and you got a decision and you're like, hey, man, I don't know if I can make this. I don't know if I can do this. I'll put it to you like this. My wife told me a long time ago. She said, look, it's like jumping off a diving board. You're either going to jump off the diving board, you're going to hit water, or you're going to hit concrete. One of the two is going to be a lot different outcome. I hit water, but I put the hard work into it. So if you jump off the diving board and you don't put much effort into it, you might hit concrete. So don't have any reservations. If you guys ever want to be a tool guy and you want to reach out and you want to go independent, you can take it from these two guys. How long have you been doing this? Three, four months. I Three think. or four months. Do you like the tool business? I do. It's a great it's a great job to have. It's fun. You get to talk to people all day. You're getting to learn new things. You get to keep up with your customers. It's a good business. Is it really that hard? It's really not that complicated. You just got to know your customers and interact with your customers. If you have good relationships with your customers, you're going to have a good week. So it's all about relationships. What's your hardest thing of the tool business, Drew? <sighs> Waking up every day and collecting money. No. <laughs> yeah. Collect, collecting money is not easy no matter what brand you're in. Okay, guys? No matter if you're a Cornwall guy, Maco guy, Mac, or Snap-on, collecting is the hardest part of the job. And yes, we don't want to charge high prices the way that we do, but that's the way the tool business is set up because we get screwed so much out of money. But whether you're with Maco, whether you're with Cornwell, or whether you're an, ind an independent, at least you know that you're padding your own pocket for your benefit for putting in all the hard effort. So thank you guys for listening to us. Thank you guys for reaching out. Thank you guys for watching this channel. If you ever need anything, we're here, we're accessible. You can you can go straight over to our webpage. What is it, Connor? Textchoicetools.com, and we're also on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. And you can, I think it's Text Choice on TikTok and Instagram, and then Facebook is just Text Choice Tools and Equipment. So if, you can always reach out on there. If you're not a follower, you should be, because we put some fantastic promotions Amazing out there. Deals. We fight for these promotions every single day. You will have the same access. You just have to reach out and form those uh, relationships with the manufacturers. I've been in this 21 years. I didn't get to this point overnight, but I did start somewhere. 
Started with a Cornwall dealer in 2001, left in 2008, and hadn't looked back since. Here's the power of being an independent guy. So if you're an independent guy and you start your route and you, you, you start with a company, and I'm gonna pick on Snap-on here a lot. I don't have a personal vendetta against them, but if you're a Snap-on guy, they're gonna give you 250 customers. That's not the case being an independent. If you're working the route and you're going to a shop, let's say they don't trust you, they don't wanna do business with you, they say they're too rough and tough and they only buy Maco or they only buy Snap-on, forget that shop, man. You can go across the street. You can go way down the street and go pick up another shop. And the, being an independent, there's no restrictions, okay? You can be as free as you wanna be because you 100% work for yourself. There's so many tools in this world that are rebranded, that are put on the Snap-on truck, that are put on the Maco truck. Maco doesn't make anything but a toolbox, okay guys? So there's so many tools that are out there that are put on these other trucks that are rebranded. Uh, we have them on our truck too. Do you want to elaborate a little bit on that, Drew? About so, I mean, I have customers that come on our truck for the first time, and they'll be like, wow, I think I've seen this tool before. And I'm like, yeah. And I'll have to explain to them, you know, whether it's a Matco, a Cornwell tool. Um, some Snap-on stuff starting to become like that, too. And uh, the price difference is crazy, man. And in this day's economy, too, these techs are starting to get to where they don't care about the name recognition so much because they need to make a paycheck because hours are getting harder to get. So here's my, here's my experience with what tool guys do. So all techs go to school. They go to school and they go to some Lincoln tech or something like that. They give them a student discount. They shove snap on down their throat. They tell them that's what you have to buy to be a professional technician. They start out their job. They come on my truck on a daily basis and they think snap-on's the only direction and they're gonna buy everything that they can possibly buy that's snap-on. There's other options, guys. Some companies that were made overseas, the companies that were developed overseas have really gained a lot of ground on making quality products that are made overseas. Do I wanna support the United States? 100%. But I've also, pretty money conscious too and I like to watch my wallet. So if you got a guy that's showing up every week and he's carrying a product that he's gonna warranty and he's gonna stand behind it and it looks like it's probably the same product that you're seeing on a Snap-on truck, don't hesitate to give that guy a chance. There's so many other options out there, so many other software programs that are out there because when you go to work for Snap-on, they actually send you to school for two weeks. Well, that's two weeks you could be making money in my opinion. But you go to Snap-on School and they shove that down your throat that everybody else's tools are junk and that's not the case. That's not what the mechanics think. So the experienced mechanic, which is the older guy, which is the 60-year-old, 55-year-old guy that's out here on my route, he's done buying that program because he knows better. So all you guys, if you watch this video and you're young, uh, don't hesitate to give the independent guy because he can give you just as good service uh, with a good quality tool. I mean, in my opinion, Drew, does a 10 millimeter socket fit a 10 millimeter bolt? That's right. A hundred percent. I sell that all, I sell that all the time. People say, well, this one's got better quality because it's the chrome is better and this is better and this is better, but it's $70 more. And it's got a lifetime warranty, you yeah, know? Yeah, right. So what does it matter? Right. You know? And if you got a good tool guy that's coming by every week, what does it matter if it breaks every other week? Because the actually, Snapple one will do it too. Drew, how much stuff do you actually warranty? Not that much. Right. You'd be surprised. I mean. I send my warranties off three times a year, guys. Three times. They pile up. They go in my garage. Mechanics are hard on stuff. I promise you. That's why they buy it and they pay the high prices. But I, I send my stuff off three times a year. I personally put it in my vehicle and I drive it to Atlanta and I drop it off for warranty. So I don't believe in product that I have to warranty day after day after day after day. If I find a product that's crap, and believe me, I have. If I find a product that's crap, I put it on the truck, sell a few of them. If they turn out to be junk, I'll take it off my truck. I don't sell it anymore. But I don't have a district manager sending me five or six or seven or whatever and saying, hey, you're, you guys are gonna have to sell these because this is what we're pushing this week. It's up to you. You are the one that's in control of your truck and you're the ones in control of all of your decisions. So once again, if you're thinking about going independent and you're on the fence and you think you can't make it, I'm, li <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm living proof that it's 100% obtainable. obtainable. Yeah, good, good, 
Good comeback, Connor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, obtainable, that you can make a good living and sell a lot of tools. We talked about doing 15, 13, 10,000 in collections. No toolboxes, guys, no toolboxes. None. So get out there, go to work, start your project off small. One other thing, sorry, this just hit me. I really have to talk about this, guys, and I'm super excited about it. So we had a Maco guy, or a Mac guy that worked for us, worked with us for six months. He was in our route for six months. He went straight out of business. Here's the problem in going with a flag dealer. They've gotten a little too cocky, and I hate to use that word, but when you go to be a dealer with Mac, Cornwell, Maco, Snap-on, anything like that, the first thing they're gonna say to you is you gotta buy a new truck. If you're not doing 10 grand a week, you don't need a brand new truck. I will tell you that. Yep. If you go out and you spend $160,000 on a truck, you're gonna be working to pay your tool, your tool truck note, and that's it. No one gets into this job to do this job for free, right? Right. No one gets in this job to do it for free. You're doing it to support your family. You're doing it to support your hobbies. You're doing it for so that you can make money. And being an independent dealer, there's plenty of used tool trucks out there. I mean, for God's sakes, I started out with a 1994 P60 auto car. I don't know if you guys even know what that up is, <laughs> but you might want to look that up on Google. I put three engines in it the first three or four years that I had it. It was a gas burner. And you know why I made it? Because my expenses were low. So if you go to work for a company that tells you you have to buy a 2018 or a 2019 or newer truck just to, just to be a dealer, that's a recipe for disaster. I'm telling you, you could start this business out in a van. You could start this business out in a U-Haul truck. You could start this business out in a trailer. I did start in yep. a old model truck, but I bought a new truck, a 2020. That was 20 years after being in the tool business. And guess who gets to drive it? Drew. Drew. <laughs> Drew gets to drive the brand new truck. <laughs> I bought a brand new truck at a tool show. I don't even drive it. I drive a 2001. You know why? Cause it's paid for that way i can make more money and put it in my pocket and buy more tools and buy more inventory so if you're on the fence about being an independent dealer go out buy you a used truck fill it full of tools inventory is your king fill it full of tools start doing routes get every customer to owe you 200 dollars, paying you 40 dollars a week and start doing business and stay consistent. The most important thing about being an independent dealer is being there every single every week. week. When my tool truck breaks down, what do I drive every day, Connor? I hate to even ask, say uh, this. A minivan. Yeah, I have a minivan, guys. I bought it cheap, but if my tool truck's broke down, I show up in the minivan. You know why? Not to try to sell any tools or do any of that. I just wanna let the customer know that I'm committed and I'm gonna be there. So every week, Shit, tell the customer you're gonna be there. Go to, the, go to the guy that owes you the least amount of money first. Talk to that guy. It's not that hard, guys. You can make this happen. One thing good about being an independent guy is, is there's no restrictions, okay? So being an independent guy, you can go anywhere. You can have as many customers as you want to. You can reach out. You can, you can expand your route as big as you want. You can go internet, but I will tell you that's a whole nother beast and you might not want to go down that road because it ain't easy. So Drew, I'll let you elaborate, elaborate a little bit on telling uh, the guys about, we have some customers, I know I have some, but I want you to tell yeah. them about having some customers that may have moved out of your area. So for instance, I had a customer that was with me for about a year and a half in my area that I service the town we live in. And uh, he moved about an hour away. Now this guy was a really good customer paid his bill on time, paid very well, and called me up and he said, hey man, I know I'm paid off with you, but hey, I need a Milwaukee half inch impact gun, some batteries, so and so. And it's, you know, it was about $800 to $1,100. And uh, I trusted the guy because we built that relationship beforehand that I shipped it to him and paid me every week like clockwork. But if you were a Snap-on guy, a Maco guy, Mac guy, you don't have that option. Like that's not a, that's not an option. The account. Exactly. So you're going to give it to someone else that you built a relationship with. So no, and that's half the battle with the tool business is building that relationship, building that trust, building that likability. So once you have that, you need to keep that. So we're all tool guys that have gained and worked really hard to gain our customers trust. And I know I've done it. I've got a lot of customers just like Drew elaborated a while ago about it. Uh, I don't know if I even used the right word there, but Drew just talked about it. I have customers that are outside my area. I have customers in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is about four hours away. 
I haven't even met. I haven't even physically met this person, but you know by talking to people that you could trust someone. But if you were a Snap-on, a Mac, a Maco, a Cornwell, or something like that, that's out of your territory and it's real shunned against. So I'm not trying to mix it up where tool guys are selling all over the country, but you know how hard you work to deal with that customer and listen to his problems and listen to his dog dying or his wife having They're a problem. All therapists or, too. or something like that. I mean, some of the guys love to talk a lot and we've got to do our best at like get, getting them on and off the truck at one point. But, but if you put the time in, then you should get paid. So put the time in, deal with the customer. If they move, you're still gonna be able to deal with that guy. And that's one joy of being an independent. Guys, if you're on the fence and you're don't really know what you're gonna do about software or if you have any options to so say you're running uh, classic computers, if you're with Cornwell, that's all I know because that's what I ran. Or if you're a Maco guy and you don't know how to transfer your information from your Maco route over to your new software, I did it. There's plenty of companies out there that can take care of you and make that work. Uh, another thing is like, you're not limited to any product, product that you want to sell on your truck. So let's say you're a Mac uh, branded truck. Well, being a Mac branded truck, you're supposed to sell DeWalt, right? Because it's a rebranded DeWalt tool on your truck. And if you're a Snap-on guy, you're supposed to sell Snap-on Electric. I mean, my Snap-on guy that I compete against sells Milwaukee. Yeah, mine does too. Which tells me that he doesn't believe in his own product. Yeah. The Maco guy that has the Maco product on there, I guarantee you that his district manager tells him every day, don't put Milwaukee on your truck. Let's face it, Milwaukee is the leader in the battery powered industry. That's why Snap-on got sued by Milwaukee for trying to take their battery technology and they had to write a big check. So having that ability to get with big companies like Milwaukee or like Gear Wrench or Thexton or Lyle or Sun X or Gray Pneumatic or anything like that. The, the products are unlimited. You can sell whatever you want. I mean, I'm going to tell you some stuff on here that you probably don't even want to hear. Guys, you're not limited to what you can sell on the truck. You can sell about whatever you want. You can carry any brand. I mean, for God's sakes, the rope ratchet that's not carried by Integrated Supply Network uh cornwell tools mac tools as far as i know i'm the only one that sells those things where did i get them i researched the company and i found out where they were so i brought that company in i put them on my truck guys love them and i sell the crap out of them so if you want to go to toys r us and buy remote control cars do whatever you want to you can do that actually i did that when i very first started in the cornwell business and I don't suggest that as a good idea. <laughs> so we sell a lot of different products on our truck. We try to keep it legit. We try to keep it uh, in the tool business genre. Pocket knives, you wanna look out, you wanna carry a different pocket knife that you might not get from your vendor or you can't buy directly from Cornwell, put it on your truck. You have that freedom. You know why? Because you're in control of what you do. Just keep it legal and do what you do, you know, do your own thing and guys will love it. So. Uh, don't be worried about if you're going to have any product. It's all up for you to be the smart shopper and reach out to find things that you want to put on your truck that your customers are going to buy. I mean, we sell t-shirts and hoodies and everything else that, and, and we have those printed 100% ourselves. you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, we sell Bluetooth speakers and, and, uh, all kind of different things. There's a lot of companies out there like tech life. Uh, they stopped distributing to uh, warehouse distributors in the tool world. Well, I developed that relationship with them at a tool show, and there's one sitting right down there. Exactly. So I still buy their product. I buy direct from them, and I still sell it because it's a fantastic product. So shout out to Tech Life. Go follow them on Instagram. Great company. And if you're a tool guy, you need to put those suckers on your, on your truck because you're going to sell a bunch of them, especially in the spring. So you guys have a great weekend. Thank you guys for tuning in to Tech's Choice. Thank you, Clay Coon, for coming down here and shooting this video. We hope you guys the best in all of your business. If you are looking for something and you are buying tools, buy it from your local tool guy. Support your local tool man. He's out there hustling and, and going every single day. We would enjoy your business, but if you don't have a tool guy, we, we'll be more than happy to take care of you. But if Joe's Tools comes and sees you every single week, buy something from Joe. If he doesn't take care of you, we would love to take care of you guys too. Thank you guys for watching Tech's Choice. Y'all have a fantastic day.